All right, guys. Bonus episode with my good friend Alex Hooper. Awesome comedian. Awesome dude. We talk about a lot of stuff. Basically, he, he did a tweet the other day about uh, what he did on his birthday. And I was like, you got you to gotta do it. It's like an itemized list of how his day went. I was like, you got to come do a bonus episode. He's like, hell yeah. He's such a great dude. Always positive uh, about stuff. Realistic about things. But also just he's just got a, he's got like a loving, positive twist to a lot of stuff. And so that's definitely medicine for people like myself that I'm like, I want to hear someone uplift me and make me feel good. So I hope it does the same for you guys. We talk about his uh, nudist beach trip uh doing dmt and why uh uh why doing a social media fast is uh probably a good a uh, good idea that you should do at least once a week all right guys here goes the bonus episode boing, 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 bonus episode i don't know if that was a song was i coming up with a song bonus episode how you been man you look good thanks dude you too man look at us we've been out we've been living in the sun enjoying our lives a little Got to do it, man. I got to. I got to make sure I get outside every day. I you know? feel the same way, dude. I get like depressed if I don't. If the day goes by like by four o'clock, I'm like, I don't know why, but I'm like, I don't have a lot of joy all of a sudden. And I'm like, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, be, I make sure I'm going to the park a lot, slacklining, going to the beach. I went on a hike already today. I'm just like, yeah, got to make sure I like, you know, I don't want to roll out of this quarantine. I, and not just for physical health, dude, of rolling out of here and being fat and sluggish. I mean, like, I can't even understand how many people, like, I would think that there'd be hundreds of people in the street all day. I mean, by you, maybe in, in LA, but like in the suburbs, I'm like, there's a lot of people. I'm like, are you guys just not going out? Because this is most of the good feelings in life is just like that, that breeze and saying hi to a gardener, you know? Like, yes. Uh, you're dude, a uh, a hundred percent like without 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 comedy right now like i need to be out there for my own mental health yeah and now the people that are really just keeping themselves indoors i'm just like you're doing yourself a little bit of a disservice there your birthday tweet i'm gonna pull it up on my phone your birthday tweet was (laughs) so good and it inspired me right away where i was like i need to do a bonus episode uh with hooper right away where do i oh fun is it on your Instagram? Can I see it on your Instagram? Where it's on my tw- no, it, my tweets are only on my Twitter. I yeah. I would like I put stuff from my Insta. Sometimes I'll do a story with a tweet that I really like, but I never I I hate people that use Instagram to put their tweets there. Okay, I'm just I, and if you're one of them, I'm sorry. I'm oh, it's all good. Not, I'm not for it. I'm just like this is. I'm here to see pictures, not yeah. your words. But go back to Twitter. Well, just so you know, though, <laughs> Alex. Um, Pictures are actually, they're actually pictures of words. So anyway. Oh, okay. Oh, and the letters are black. So now you're racist. Whoa. Damn it. You got me there. That's a, that's a problem with, what is it? Self, self-destroying cancel culture. I'm just, they're yep. just like, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to destroy all of us, including ourselves. Cause we're naturally racist. Uh, <laughs> somehow I got a screenshot of it and I, 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 okay, I said, good. as soon as I saw it, I was like, this is beautiful. Can I read it to the, yeah, to yeah, yeah. the listeners? Yesterday, I turned 35, so I did a 35-hour social media blackout. Here's how I celebrated. Flop, flopping it out at a nude beach, eating oysters and ribeye, boning it up, smoking DMT, <laughs> crying while listening to Lana Del Rey, housing a carvel cake, a truly magnificent day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. I, 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 went, I went hard, dude. You know, so basically like I've been, so we had, I know we're going to talk about it. So I had AGT last week. Um, so I had like a television thing. And so I was like stuck on my phone for a, like two and a half days straight responding to messages, trying to keep up with the new followers and all this other yeah. stuff. And I was like, I hit, I, w- I was my birthday on Friday and I was like, I need to do something to get me off my phone, get me out of the house. I can't just have the same normal quarantine day of like, wake up, go to the park, read a book, write in my journal. I need to do something. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to drive up the coast, maybe to Santa Barbara. I'm going to get myself a nice lunch. I'm going to jump in the ocean. I'm just going to enjoy a day at the beach. And early on, my friend called me to wish me a happy birthday. I'm driving up the coast and he goes, Hey man, you know where you should really go is Pirate's Cove. It's just south of San Luis Obispo. And I was like, I've never heard of that. And he goes, dude, it's a nude beach. And I was like, Oh, I've never been to a nude beach. He's like, well, today's a good day for it. And I was like, you know what? 
damn straight. I'm by myself because I wanted to have the day to myself. I didn't want to like have to deal with other people and stuff like that. So my, my fiance was working. I was like, I'm going to go solo. And I drove all the way to San Luis Obispo to go to this nude beach. And when I first got there, first of all, have you ever been to a nude beach? I don't think I have. Okay. I, I, I never so. had, I, I never had either. Um, so I saw your picture on Instagram, it. by the way, speaking of pictures on Instagram, <laughs> of just your legs. Oh yeah. Just my legs. I was like, I, I, t- I took it from right in front of my dick. I was like, you're not going to get everything. Clever, clever but, girl. All right. But we, <laughs> what was so funny about it. So you have to like kind of hike down to this like beach thing. They don't make it super easy to get there. Like it's not, hard but it's enough to keep out people you know of a certain age and mindset yeah um and when i got down there the first thing i saw was like 25 teenagers like clothed just blasting music and having a party and thankfully i wasn't naked yet because i looked around i was like oh my god nobody here is naked this like, is weird. I, yeah. maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this isn't a nude beach. But then I kept walking a little bit further. So one topless person, I'm like, okay, well, that's a good sign. And then I made a little, there's this kind of a little rock formation that kind of juts out on the beach, almost like a set, a divider. Yeah. And when I got to the other side of that, I was like, oh, here this is the beach the- that I am looking for. Oh, and I then, love it. Um, oh, yeah. And immediately, like, I saw their naked people. I put my towel down. I was like, buy buy clothing and part of my mentality was that like i'm not i've never been like super proud of my body or anything like that and and i'm not i know right i'm and if you are and you're listening out there um fuck you with everything that i feel in my body um like how dare how dare you be proud of yourself like we should all be ashamed these things are disgusting (laughs) yeah yeah they're awful and i'm then but what i realized is i was like i don't get scared anymore like i used to through stand-up like it used to be every single night i'm jacking up my nerves i'm walking on stage and i have that moment of fear of like what if this doesn't go well and it really Really inspire me to keep like going and living and yeah. without stand up because of quarantine I've been losing that so I was like a nude beach is a perfect way for me to feel like scared like people are looking at me maybe but that there's no control and I'm fully exposed just like I am when I'm doing stand up yeah and man I gotta tell you it was liberating as shit it felt so good and i've gotten the ocean and because you have to hike down to this spot you're there's like a 200 foot like cliff right in front of the beach so you, i was just floating on my back naked letting the waves splash over me looking at this gorgeous cliff and it was beautiful and amazing and i very did quickly realize i was looking around i was like oh i I finally look like the type of person who belongs at a (laughs) nude beach. And and me both, dude. Right? And that's, and dude, what I immediately realized is people are, uh, one person was like, that's kind of creepy, Alex. And I was like, no, what would have been creepy is if I had left my clothes on and I was a single man at the nude beach. Oh, for sure. That would have been creepy. But me just being like, hey, I'm letting it hang out. There was a group of like probably like 20, 21 year old girls right next to me that weren't naked. And they were just like kind of doing the, the lay down, like un- undo the bathing straps. So you don't get the tan lines, Yeah, but like they weren't actually naked, but they didn't care that I was or anyone else was. And what I found very interesting was, um, I just started talking to the people around me. Like normally when I'm at the beach, if like somebody is over here and over here, I'm not paying attention. I'm not going to join in their conversation. But when we're all just laying around naked, I felt like gloves are off, baby. Like we can yeah. just, I, if I want to, if they're, you're drinking a beer, I'm smoking a bowl. Let's have a conversation while we're sitting here with our dicks out and tits out. <laughs> And I, I mean, that's that's what adult humans uh i think are, are at least uh healthy responsible ones i think that's what we should be able to and can do i mean it's great i love yeah, and, uh, my, my, yeah, I'm i love totally it too it. and uh, it's one, one of the things i miss the most is is just talking to strangers all the time like yeah, i really definitely. thrived on meeting all these people and going on the road and just having these conversations with people that i otherwise yep. i may never see again and i, I loved it and that's kind of what this moment was. It's like, look, we're, we're, we're all here. Let's just, we can talk to each other. We're all just, we're all just here to have a good time, right? Is everybody nude nice. but wearing a mask? 
Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, nobody, that some guy's so dick come nope. <clears throat> and I was like, oh my God. Just, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like he puts a little hole in his Speedo so his penis can breathe. Yeah. Uh, it was, a, you know, it's funny. I did have a thought all of a sudden. I had this one quick thought of just like, oh my God, what if I got recognized? I was on TV three days ago. Like, what if? somebody called me like just p- called me out and thankfully it didn't happen because honestly i was i i had a quick thing of like how would i respond i think i would deny it i think is, is it is <laughs> there a problem if you're if you have a, a public uh um career that you shouldn't be at a nude beach i mean like no by no means i, I just w- like that's not exactly how i want to meet people if they're like dude i saw you on tv three days ago and it's just like oh well now you're seeing the rest of me. I, I signed 20 Orlandias that weekend. It was crazy. <laughs> hey, I actually, I, I, know, I, I almost positive I've never been to a new beach, but I love being naked in nature. And it's like oh, a yeah. thing for me that I just, I absolutely love it. And I've, I've like, you know, I, I used to have an ATV. I, lo- I loved like, just like my, my girlfriend at the time. I remember I was just like driving out somewhere, just getting naked, like in the, there's something about having the, just, nature around you and either making love or even if you're by yourself like the sun hitting your dick and balls feels so good and people that are living that puritan life that never let that happen you don't even know how good it it feels like it feels like it's like a star not 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 a star like alex a television star but a star (laughs) like an actual ball of heat giving you you like giving you a happy ending i mean it's not maybe it's not maybe yes. it's a, that's, that's, that's a, a very sexual. good way of putting it but having that hot light just hit your balls <laughs> it, it feels so amazing yeah having i don't know the sunscreen everywhere <laughs> there was a little there was a little joy in like having to just like <laughs> take the can and like shoot it up my butt a little bit just like everywhere you're everywhere extra, extra careful you know, like your asshole's not gonna get any sun on it you're like it just might it just might. I don't it's a whole know. new meaning to asking a stranger to get your back for you. Can you just <laughs> can you give me real quick? Just, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tuck my balls real quick. Do you mind just kind of laying under there and just shoot it straight up? That would be fantastic. Um, so, but so that was fl- that was part one of the birthday. It was okay, like, I love just, that. You know, perfect timing because I want to get to part two because uh, I love being naked, but I I might love eating oysters and ribeye even more. Let's 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 hear about this. Yeah, so my um, so uh, there's a restaurant right down the street from my house. I live in West Hollywood. There's a restaurant right down the street that recently converted their parking lot into an entire outdoor seating area. Genius. They put up, they put they put astroturf down on the parking lot. So they smart. put string lights up. They separated all the tables, Brilliant. and I was like, dude, this is. I was like, I've never been to this restaurant. I've always thought about it because I, I I pass it all the time, and I was like, this is beautiful. Like this is really nice. So my fiance and I made a reservation there. And it's like a French themed restaurant. So yeah, I mean, immediately we're just like, we're like oysters, steak. She got soul. Um, she got soul. Uh, she got soul, baby. Yeah. She she got uh, she got <laughs> she, uh, on the menu. She got soul, baby. Yeah, S O U L. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got a little soul, got a little funky here. My girlfriend got tilapia. <laughs> like four other musicians go up and go, Girl, you got the soul. Here we go. Um, it was so a lovely, a lovely, lovely dinner. Um, that's great. Really, really nice. Brett Michaels was at the table like, from Poison? right across from us. Yeah. Okay, with, he How did with you recognize like, him? Is he still dressed like Brett Michaels? He, Yes, he was very much dressed like that. Like he had the long blonde hair. He had a fedora. He was wearing sunglasses. I was like, "Bro, you can't hide." They're like, come on. I would every, every rose has its thorn. That's oh uh, no. I would have <laughs> I unskinny bop my way over to his table. Excuse me, sir. Just want to say you're one of my favorites, and uh, I've been recently tested, so I can come close to you to tell you this. Uh, unskinny pop, sir. And I don't know if you know this, but my fiance's got soul. So if you're looking for a backup singer, you found her. This is it. Uh, and- Makes me want to get the flesh and blood tattoo right now. Okay. Get it, dude. What are you waiting for? <laughs> so an epic epic meal. Okay, that's great. Oysters and ribeye. Epic meal. Um, went, and so we, What's uh, the name of the restaurant, by the way? La Boheme. La Boheme? Okay, I haven't been there. Yeah, B-O-H-E-M-E. Uh, it's right, on, uh, it's right at, uh, on Santa Monica Boulevard just by La Cienega. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, just, e- just east of La Cienega. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
I yeah, used to be so, my veterinarian used to uh, used to take my cats right right over there. It's a great spot. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. There's not a ton of good food over there. Yeah, but that that's awesome. Oh yeah. My kudos to them for a kudos to them for adapting and overcoming you know these big challenges. And be like, all right, let let's take that tar- parking lot, make it into a safe place to serve food. There you go. Now people. Yeah, not just a safe place, but like a beautiful environment. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, this is just really perfect looking, especially with the astroturf laid down. And like they're not getting rid of it after the vaccine. Like that's staying. I hope. I hope they. Don't. That'd be crazy if they, they did. Should, I think they should keep it. It was really. It was really lovely. And then of course you know. So now we have a nice meal. Um, go home. The boning it up, I think, is the next part of that tweet. <laughs> you know, it's 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 birthday. Like, I mean, you yeah. know, my fiance, my fiance and I are pretty consistent anyway. Like, I think one of the hardest parts during for couples during quarantine, because I remember at the beginning, people were like, "You couples are so lucky. You're just home with each other all the time. You're probably just boning all the time." And I was like, "What are you are like?" <laughs> Have you ever been no. in a relationship in your life? Yeah. yeah. I was like, I was like, we're sitting around in our pajamas watching TV. Like <laughs> trying not to say me to this. each other. Like, <laughs> yeah, we've had to like, we literally have had to keep like almost like not a schedule, but just like at least once a week being like, Hey, we, we got to get in there and do it's, this thing. So we keep each other engaged. It's even crazier with, um, you know, with uh, not to complain at all or to compare, but with the two kids, it's like, it's the same thing where it's like, it becomes like, we've been on a 120 some odd day schedule, no breaks, no Saturdays or Sundays. I mean, that's like it, the insanity. I definitely, yeah. like, I, I was joking with Frank Castillo, like him posting him and his wife, just like smoking weed, watching movies and like MMA fights. And I'm just like, yeah, we're not just sitting around eating pizzas, getting stoned over here. It's a whole different yeah. quarantine. Not complaining. Got a whole new thing. Not complaining <laughs> at all. Love my kids more than life itself. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's challenging to all of us in different ways, you know? Definitely. And I think, but I do think it's important to try to maintain some level of intimacy during this so that, you know, it, you have those, you have those moments of like, okay, we're still good here. Oh, Even yeah. Because it gets a little contentious at times. We live in a one bedroom apartment and now we're both home all the time. And I try to get out as much as I can because she is actually doing work where I'm mostly just like, messing around like writing and just like relaxing reading whatever i'm doing (laughs) so uh yeah i mean i've used this i've used this time really as a break like i did write like i I did write some stuff that i'm proud of and i like i I did so i did work for a while and then since then i've just kind of been like you know what If, if i'm not super inspired like i'm gonna make sure i write something every day but i'm not trying to like finish another screenplay get more pilots and all that like Ugh, like in the beginning it was easy because it was like okay i got a couple weeks of a being at home i'm off work like let's get stuff done but as it kept time kept progressing further and further my motivation just decreased more and more each day and some days i wake up like today where i'm like okay cool i know i have a phone call with a friend at 11 i got a podcast at noon i got a, a slack line listening at four and a zoom show at six let's wake up and go on a hike let's do all these like let's go and yeah. then there's other days where i'm like I don't know what the hell to do with myself today. Like, I guess I'll go on a walk. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm no doctor again as my disclaimer, but I do think that the schedule and the routine is essential for me. And it might be that way for the bigger picture for everybody else too. Like it, I wake up really early just because of my kids and I go to bed really early. I, I don't stay up late and watch TV. Like I go to bed at like nine thirty, ten o'clock. Like we put them to bed, yeah. take my vitamins, you know, go to the bathroom, whatever, talk to my wife for a few minutes. And then we're just like, all right, I'm going to sleep. And, it's like that schedule to me keeps me sane, keeps me healthy. And you don't have to subscribe to any of those things. But even like you're talking about people with writing scripts, I think someone did a really good post when this first started. And it was like, hey, like you don't have to feel because there were those like very motivational scripts that were like, uh, if you don't come out of this uh, pandemic with like a you know a whole new career or whatever else, then you wasted this time. You know, like, like Shakespeare like, wrote King Lear during his pandemic. Yeah, and some what people that some people are in the mental space where that's how they're going to cope with this, keep themselves healthy, and and get to the next level in their life and survive this crazy event that like that. But other people, it's like, oh, maybe it's important that I learn how to sleep properly, get exercise not crave yes. the drug that is whatever attention I get at my job or, or whatever pat on my head I get for my trophies for my career or start going like, oh, what are the simple, like going camping, what's the simple primal stuff that like my real Maslow hierarchy says I need? And it's like, oh, I just need like shelter, food, learning to live in the moment. Like, and some of us, that's the, yes. that's the important thing. And maybe some of us, like what you're saying, it's every other day, write your screenplay one day and the next day, it's okay, fuck off and read and play with your cat and, you know, 
put on your fiance's dresses and look in the mirror and do your signs of the lamb impressions. Like whatever you got to do, stay sane and be grateful. <laughs> I don't know. What am I saying? It puts the lotion in the basket. Yeah. I, uh, no, I feel the exact same way as because I really, I realized like, whoa, I've been going so hard in my life and my career and the way I'm just, I'm always going hundred miles per hour and I've been doing it for 10 years. If I'm not performing, then I'm at a music festival and I'm taking a bunch of drugs and running myself rampant, or I'm just always meeting friends and doing, and doing this and writing and all these things. I was just like ne- going to work every day, like at a regular job and then doing comedy all night. And I never let myself stop and breathe. So when this happened, I was like, one of the things I need to do is just really just appreciate the fact that I'm never going to sleep this much in my life again. I'm never going to have this sort of relaxation time where I can literally just curl up with a book in the park for three hours and just do and know that I have nothing that I need to be doing. There's nothing that I'm like, Oh, that's really pressing. I should be working on this, but instead I'm just messing around. No, like that's not happening right now. So I make sure that I stay productive enough so that I don't feel like I'm being left behind or that I'm losing any sort of like uh, of the funny that like lives inside my brain. Like just even doing like these podcasts, just riffing with another friend, oh, yeah. having these moments, like is just so important right now. So, totally. And whatever, however you're coping with this is fine. Like, you know, I mean, I've had, I've lost friends during this and it's been brutal. And the hardest part about losing a friend during like a, a time like this is because you really, you give them the time, you give them time and you think about them and the way they influence you and the way that you love them. But at the same time, you're like, I'm dealing with so much shit right now. I got to process and move on, yeah. you know, because we're all dealing with this entire global collapse. So it's really hard to just like, it was, I mean, I had like, literally, I remember a, losing a friend, taking a couple hours, writing about him, thinking about him. And then I literally was like, I can't even go celebrate his life with my other friends because we can't even get together right now. It's the wor- so, weirdest, worst. Uh, so I'm sorry that you lost your, your friend. That's friggin' awful you know we've all lost something during this you know yeah. whether whether it be whether it be friends career motivation you know we gain weight whatever wholesome, it may be. wholesome picture of the world <laughs> yeah remember when uh remember when we used to think that like everything was kind of moving smoothly and all that no yeah. like this is this has been one giant lesson in what happens when we let our feelings marinate too long and too many you know it's it's, this is a very, I hate to say it, it is an exciting time. As, as boring as it is, this is a very exciting time to be alive because there's, there's not going to be another time like this in our lifetime. I, I hope hopefully. not. I really hope not. <laughs> I, I've, I've listened to a few people, Peter Atia being one of them and a couple of people that have brought up like, hey, this is actually like a, a, a dress rehearsal. I think Sam Harris said this is a dress rehearsal for a real pandemic because as seeing how everything is thrown off of its balance from a disease that kills this small percentage. Imagine something that killed 10, 20% of the people that got it or more. Right. And they're like, and with globalization and like these markets and people bio testing and all this kind of stuff, like there could be another one. And I'm just like, Oh my God, like I'm overwhelmed with this one. And people are already like, Oh, I hope we don't ever have another. So yes, I hope you're right. And that this is the only time in our life that things are ever this bad and this crazy. So, like, I, I guess I'll leave it at that. Uh, and this would yeah. probably be a good segue into <laughs> your next thing that you did on your list after boning it up. <laughs> yeah. So I decided. I had decided the the day before um, that I was going to smoke DMT on my birthday. I was thinking about it the night before. Like I was sitting around going like, hey, it's it's midnight. You're already 35. Why don't you do it right now? And then I was kind of like, no, nah, you can't. That's one of those drugs where you can't just be like, yeah, let's just do it right now. Blah. Like I got to think about that for an entire day. And have you done it before? What I'm going to do. Yes, I've done okay, it. So you already about, knew. That's why you knew so well. Like this, I got to think about this. Yeah, I've done it probably 50 times or so in the past three years okay. um i did it for the first time three years ago i bought i bought a bunch of it like having never done it i found a guy who had it and i was like you know what i'm gonna buy a lot because i know this is something that i'm going to want to do again and i also know it's something that is very hard to find so the fact that i found it i'm gonna capitalize on this you went to costco so I, for your dmt you're like i'll take the big box right. 
Thank you. Uh, Straight up, they were, I was like, can I do a sample right here? Do you have a chair I can sit in for 15 minutes after I take the sample and just zone the fuck out under your fluorescent lights? And also some taquitos, please. Also taquitos here. That would be great. Uh, yeah, some frozen taquitos. Okay, so so, so you, had, you had a stash of it. And you said, okay, yes. I waited. I knew. So what's your set and setting? Where, where did you do it? So I went out to my balcony. Um, I have a I have a lovely balcony. My street is has ton is totally tree lined, and my balcony just faces directly out to my street. Um, so I have like a wonderful comfort comfy couch out there. And I was like, I'm gonna do it here. I'm gonna put on my headphones. I'm gonna put on like good music. And this is typically what I do. I have like I have a few tracks that I have that are like about ten minutes long. Um, that will basically lead me through the entire experience and basically just take a deep breath and then just start just start huffing it just start going as fast just smoke it hard and fast and I, have you ever done it before no you literally have about 30 to 45 seconds before you are completely debilitated so you have to just smoke this thing as hard and fast as you can and then literally hit play on my music put my blindfold down and then I'm just, and then I'm gone. And then I'm gone. Um, and the reason I do it with a blindfold and a lot of people do it with a blindfold is like, it's a very, it's obviously a very powerful psychedelic, but I like to give myself the option of blackness is my brain is going to show me whatever it can, because I have a clear landscape. I have a canvas that ne- has, needs painting and yeah. my brain is going to paint all over this yeah i mean that's very like that's from the school of mckenna that's very much like that's how you do uh, psychedelics it's just like in darkness like set and setting uh not with a bunch of people and a bunch of things going on like yeah yeah you you cover your eyes so that you can see like something what it wants to show you yeah Yeah, and they and and what did it want to show you that's my next question it's 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 so hard to if you've never I done know. it it's so hard to explain because it's different every time like there's similar images that pop up again and again but for the most part like you what you're seeing and feeling is always different and like yeah there's like yeah i see like a figure of a lady and then i see a giant like i mean i saw a giant mouth that kept trying to kind of like almost put something in my mouth like it kept trying to spit something into my mouth and there was a lady behind it in the shadowy figure and it's just kind of like scenery that's just flying by you as if you were in as if you were in a car driving through it's like the Willy Wonka tunnel you know when they go through the tunnel and they're just and you're seeing all this weird stuff and it's not like you're not seeing like flies on like a piece of poop or something like that or whatever they see in that movie but you're just seeing these tons of neon colors and geometric shapes and figures dancing and stuff and just and it just keeps flying by you and you just the second you can't even think about what you're looking at because the second you think about what you're looking at you're not in the moment anymore and you're not you just have to keep going with it and trying to stay as present as possible and leaning deeper and deeper into it because it's so hard to not think like what the hell was that what did I just see because you're then you're missing everything it's it's showing you at that point wow so trying to stay present is super difficult i had a really good powerful first trip um but then i was like dude i came out of it and i was like i still feel really good and i feel like another dose of it like if i do it immediately is really gonna give me the breakthrough that i'm looking for and I, so I did it again immediately. I packed another bowl of it. And just, uh, can I, and can I pa- went, pause you though for like some of our yeah. listeners? Cause there's a real, real estate podcast, even though it's a bonus episode, I'm sure there's going to be just some people that are going to hear it and be like, what the hell for people that have <laughs> never, uh, that have never, uh, had a psychedelic experience, uh, especially, a a, a, a drug induced psych- uh, psychedelic experience. It's hard to understand. So when you say you're looking for a breakthrough, um, like, uh, how do you, how do you explain that? Like to, cause I mean, I, I've never done it before, but I've done, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, mushrooms and, and, and had sure. some, I mean, I still think about those things probably daily the experiences I've had on those, but with, with this, you're looking for a breakthrough. What, what does that mean to someone? How do we put that in linguistics to describe so it? So the, the easiest way to say it for me personally, because I, th- what happens with DMT is you, you either blast off 
or you don't. And you either, and if you blast off, then you are immediately transported into this other realm. You're flying through whatever weird space dimension you're in. You're seeing all these other this stuff you've never seen before and really can't explain. And you get there, but it was, and it was gorgeous but i was like i was so in awe of everything that was happening in the day that i had i had such a long day that it was beautiful but it didn't really hit me as emotionally maybe as i would have liked it to so i really when i take psychedelics by myself i really i love crying like in a really beautiful cathartic way not i'm sad so i'm crying over this just that like wow my you know the weight of the world is heavy and life is difficult sometimes and i've done such a good job getting myself here being in a place that is filled with love and a career that i am infatuated with and enthusiastic about and the fact that i've gotten myself here just gratitude and so the second time when i smoked it I um, I listened to a song that's a very beautiful, it's one of my, it's my favorite Lana Del Rey song. Um, and it's very powerful and beautiful. It's, um, it's called God Knows I Tried. And when I listened to that the second time through, I just broke down crying. And I mean, really like beautiful, like everything in my chest started like coming up and I was really like releasing all of these emotions that I've been sitting with for a long time that, you know, of quarantine's been difficult, not performing's been difficult. I had a huge TV appearance this week. I haven't seen friends in a, like all these things like started to kind of just yeah. build up huge. until until I allowed it to come crashing down in this incredibly wonderful way. So when I kind of like I I kind of put on that music and and smoked it again knowing that I was about to have this breakthrough and that I was going to get what I wanted from it. And I was right. Like I really, I, I really did. And then I just sat there and just kept listening to music and, um, and really just keeping, trying to keep myself in that place for as long as I could. Yeah. Wow. That is, that is powerful. I, I think something that happens so much when, when we talk about psychedelic in our, uh, world uh, in our society, in our culture, whatever you want to call it, is uh, people will, and I, I don't think anyone's doing this intentionally, but it's so it's so often it's the aesthetics of psychedelic, it's the colors, it's the shapes, it's you seeing the the mouth you're talking about spitting, trying to spit something into your mouth, and these weird weird things. And to me, I, I've never had much of the, the the big powerful things for me have always been like, oh, it's hard to even explain this when you come back from your trip to like say like what knowledge you acquired if that that sounds pretentious yeah what experience no, 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 acquired, not at all. whatever it is that, that that experience that you acquired from it that you're like oh i i don't know if i knew that inside my head in a different part of my brain that the other parts never saw before or is a new thing but that's that to me is the real powerful stuff that shifts people that makes you realize like oh like i can feel that like life is like a conveyor belt like this part of it will be over at some point and it really lights a fire under my butt like a person like myself to be like Oh, this isn't forever. So, like, if you're going to be grumpy or you're going to get uh, feel um, entitled or something didn't work my way, what the hell? Nothing. If you get self centered or whatever else, like, you can be happy as you want or as sad as you want during life. You can play victim as much as you want or you can get off your ass and, and like toughen up because this isn't going to last forever. And in fact, it, it, you talked about Willy Wonka earlier. It speeds up the farther along you get, which is crazier because the farther along yes. you get, the you realize how fast it goes by, and it speeds up. So it's this, this weird cannon being shot out of to, to even exist in biological form, if I can put it that way. And I feel like and, that's that's a huge thing for me, like in that, in that experience. I'm wondering, and, and that's the best way you can describe DMT is you are being shot out of a cannon, and at this point, you just have to hope that you land somewhere <laughs> on a cra- on a crash pad or somewhere <laughs> soft. Yeah. Because I mean, I've I've had I've never had. Um, I've never had what I consider a bad trip. Like I've had some that have been a little more challenging than others. Cause I don't like the term bad trip. I like challenging trip because okay. I think you can learn and learn from everything. That's great. But yeah. I've, I've watched people have bad experiences on DMT. I've watched my, I've watched a friend of mine a few months ago and he smoked it once and it was totally fine and wonderful and beautiful. And so like an hour later, we were like, let's do it again. And the second time he literally is laying on my couch with a blindfold on going, Oh my God, I hate this. I hate this. Why is it going to stop? When's it going to stop? And I was like, Oh "Oh, shit. And there's nothing you can do for a person in that moment, except let them ride, ride it out. out. And, 
And the visuals, like, yeah, people talk about, like, oh, the colors, I taste purple and all this stuff. It's like an but, Alex Craig like, uh, painting, man. Dude, everything's nuts. You gotta just go to a museum and stare at a Van Gogh for six hours. But, like, the thing about DMT is, like, the visuals are insane. Like, you are straight up, like, it's not like mushrooms where you're like, whoa, things are kind of circly and swirly, and I'm feeling a little, like, uneasy and weird. Like, this is weird. But, like, with DMT, it's like, oh, I've never seen this place before. I don't know where I am. And I don't know how exact, how long I'm going to be in for. So I better appreciate it while I'm here because I don't know what this is. One time I was smoking it and literally I, I saw this dancing figure like in the back and she's literally like dancing and waving her finger, like beckoning me to come closer and closer. So I kept leaning into it more and more. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to follow this figure wherever she goes. And then she literally ripped open like the fabric of time like ripped a curtain open and all of a sudden her and i were flying above this neon universe and it looked like it almost looked like tron or like that episode of like simpsons that like they did the halloween episode when homer goes into 3d land yeah and like that's what that's what it looked like in there and i was like what the hell dude there's like pink mountains and like green rivers and i'm like what am i doing and like i i was flying over it for like probably like 30 seconds and then i thought like holy shit how am i gonna get to work from this dimension i got work tomorrow and then part of you is still being practical and still like oh yeah i gotta go to work tomorrow but the second i thought that literally the the curtains like close you're not in it anymore bye and like basically kicked me out of the dimension because it, it it i wasn't present and whatever the DMT wow. spirits that are in there was like wow. you're thinking about work. You're not ready to be here right now. We were ready to show you something, but nah, you know, come back later. You know, wow. and that's you can't you like those experiences. It's you can never like you come out of a DMT trip and you the first few minutes are like, what do I remember? What do I? What are the? And all it is is just certain images and i'll never that one is one i will never forget because i realized like i was like i need to go into this much more ready for an experience and ready to give myself to it than just like okay here we go (laughs) puff what's gonna happen you know yeah yeah and it is i mean beautiful and intense and then i and then i remembered i had that carvel cake and that my fiance had bought me and I was like, baby, you know what goes great after a psychedelic experience? Ice cream cake. And <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Okay. Car- I was like, what is Carvel? I love ice cream cake. Is Carvel the place or is that a, a type of it's thing? Like, well, so they're, it's basically a brand, but they okay. also have shops like all over like a Carvel ice cream shop. Oh, okay. They're, I just they're, they're, they're basically the most famous ice cream cake company. More than like, you've definitely had it before. Like okay. if you, it has like, it has the little cookie crumbles in the middle. It's got chocolate and vanilla ice cream in it. I mean, um, as soon as you, yeah. you had me sold on when you said ice cream cake, I was just, I haven't had ice cream since this quarter quarantine started so I, i've been eating pretty healthy I, I make some cacao smoothies but i'm i could definitely go for an ice cream cake <laughs> damn dude, oh, I, eat, dude. I eat ice cream almost every day almost, oh, I'm, I'm, it's one of my it's one of my vices i'm just like i love it so much and i just try to exercise enough each day so that they cancel each other out and i know oh. it doesn't work that way but in no, my but brain i tell myself it works that way that's that, no, that's, that really makes me want an ice cream cake dude i'm like oh, <laughs> i mean dude if you've gone four and a half months like it might be time to treat yourself like what I if know. you just came because how old are your kids are they three and one uh two two and four two and four Close, so yeah. that's a pretty good that's a pretty good age to just come back and be like, it's no one's birthday, but we're having ice cream cake tonight, kids. I, Happy quarantine. That is a really good idea, even the way you just proposed that. That's a really, I mean, we, we, we all eat pretty healthy in the house, but that actually, I'm sure my wife would be super stoked to see me loosen up and be like, I'm getting those ice cream cake. Yeah, um, for sure. And the beauty of it is the one she bought me was a little, it was like six inches in diameter. Like it literally said serving size five, which for me, I was like, for me, that's going to be two. Yeah. Like, and honestly, luckily it's not lucky. It's not one. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make I, it too, just I for can, my own well being. Dude, I have no self-control with stuff. I like, we bought a dozen bagels once from this bagel place by us, which also I haven't gotten since the quarantine started, but I, I think I might get one soon on a cheat day, but bought a dozen bagels and I got it for the whole family and everybody had like a couple bagels. I must've eaten seven or eight of the bagels in like a day. Oh my God. Like, I mean, I just, I, I don't stop. If you give me really good breads or sugary stuff, like I just go until I'm sick. 
Like I just don't. That's why it's it's so bad. So uh, yes, my one fiance got into the sourdough people. game. Yeah, oh. she, she got into the sourdough game early on, and he literally got to the point where I was like, "You got to stop." Like I'm the only one here. I I can't keep eating a loaf of sourdough oh. every single Especially day. Fresh cooked, like where it's still warm and gooey on the inside. Oh and my Put some God, butter man. on that, and it's just like I'll just lay, lay down and eat that all day. Oh. Yeah, and I and, and that thing is, that, and then I can't stop going back. Then there's just a fresh loaf of bread in there in the kitchen, and it's ten feet away from me, and I'm looking at it while I'm typing on my computer. I'm like, you know what would be good right now? Another piece of bread. You deserve it, Alex. Go I ahead. treat myself like a freaking like a circus animal. I do the same thing where I'm like, I'm like, okay, so before I type this next email, I'm just gonna go have one more bite. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm bad enough with cacao smoothies and like just fruit. I bought a bag of lavender off of Amazon, like culinary lavender that you can eat. So I've been like throwing that into Ooh. smoothies with bananas. And like nice. just just w- weird stuff where I'm like, all right, I'm going to go. I'm gonna finish. I like to like edit my little real estate videos. I'm like, I'll finish editing this, but before I do, I should give myself a break. They say you should get up every 15 minutes so that your back doesn't hurt in the chair. So I'm gonna go into the kitchen and then yeah, dude, I'm so bad at that stuff. Like, I'm, I, I'm a healthy, healthily healthy glutton. I'm like, let me just get some more almonds. Just another handful of almonds. I'm not good at moderation. I never have been. Like I've always like you know if I'm if I'm getting messed up, I want to get the most messed up I can be. If I'm eating, I want to eat the most food. If I'm exercising, I want to go the furthest like on my run. Oh, yeah, if I my egg if my if, like that's what I always said about my eczema. Is, like my eczema is so bad because my body my body and brain don't do moderation. Like some people are like I just have it on my elbow or behind my knee and I'm like, "Yeah, well I got it all the fuck over, bitch." <laughs> so take that because I live it up. I'm living that eczema life. Dude, sa- same, dude. I used to get myself hurt on my bike. I'd have all these overuse injuries because I'd be like, I'm riding my bike today. I'm like, where are you going? 70 miles. I don't know, 70 or 80 miles. I'd be like, dude, your body's <laughs> not ready for that. I'd be like, it's all I can do. I'm not doing 10 miles. It's boring. And yeah, I, exactly. I you might actually like, uh, you might be into fasting or whatever. I don't know if you've ever tried that because that's really good for people like us that are just like, oh. Like, like intermittent, intermittent or like yeah, it's just fasting. It's like way easier to just fast. Like, well, they say not to do it now. Um, again, I'll bring up Peter. He said not to do it. Or he didn't say not to do it. He just recommended during the pandemic before we have things more under control because once you pass, I think, 25 or 30 hours that there's a slight dip in certain people's immune systems. It's not like it's for everybody for a certain amount of time. And, and because everyone's trying not to get the coronavirus, to stick with less than 24 hours. So nowadays, I'll fast mostly between 16 and 22 hours. And it's, Whoa. And you know, some days I'll, I'll be like, yeah, whatever. And it's 16 hours, but 16 hours is like a short one where it's like, you know, right. 16 is pretty easy because if you eat, if you eat at like seven o'clock at night and that's when you eat dinner, yeah, and then, you, you know, yeah, you don't have to eat again until like 11 a.m. the next day. That's exactly. not super difficult. It's not, you too, know, it's not too hard. It's 22 hours. That that's, that's long. For I've been doing it for two, two years now. So you get used to it where it's like, oh man, 22 hours, nothing compared to what I used to go. I used to go 30, 40. Sometimes I do. How often do you do that though? Um, I, I do it every day, but I mean, I, I, oh, wow. I, I, I'll do like, um, like right now, look at my fast app. I have an app, which makes it like way oh, easier. So you basically just eat one meal a day, like one solid meal. Yeah. I generally do like a feast. Yeah. Like I'll start, but it, it, it's just on and off. Some days I'll start and also because eating is such a family thing too. Um, I, I'm much more of like a l- late lunch mm-hmm. than a dinner person. I'm much more like, I'd rather not eat anything until like one or two and then have a crazy feast and just eat for like two hours or just like, oh man smoothies and 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 uh you know some steak and you know especially if you need to do work i find that working through an empty stomach and burning all those reserves really helps and then the reward is that you get to eat this great meal because you like i did it i did what i'm supposed to do so uh okay that was uh, as you said in your text a truly magnificent day yeah and I really, you know what I decided is, I, I, what, I, what I realized from that day um, is that I need to do a social media blackout once a week is I'm not just going to wait for like uh, for events anymore, like wait till I'm camping or whatever. Cause whenever I'm out in the, whenever I'm really like, if I'm at a festival or if I'm out in the woods camping, I'm not, tr- I don't care about my phone. I don't care about social media. Like, I'll here. take a few pictures, put it away. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm here. Yeah. I'm in the moment. And I realized I need to give myself a day like that, like once a week. So I decided that like one day a week, either Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whenever, it, whenever I pick it for that week, I'm just, there, there will be no social media that day. And I don't care uh, what's going on. So but I, 
I need to give myself a break because it's so easy for me right now, having not a lot to do and not a lot of things to work on for me to just, just pick up the phone and yeah. go back into Twitter, go back into Instagram, whatever it may be. And I just, I got to get myself out of that habit of just like, well, I'm bored. Scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> no, I think that's, I think that's beautiful to, to break out of that. Even if you don't have the change of atmosphere, because I'm, I'm the same way. If I go camping, if I go, uh, if I go do anything that I don't have to have my phone for, like I, I, I'll leave it at home. I'll leave it in the car. Um, but we don't have Is that it, option as much. So you have to make the concerted effort to do a fast, a fast from your social media for a full yeah, exa- 24 exactly. hour 22 fast. hours, dude. 22, oh, 22 hours. hours. That's all. That's all I need. 16 to 22 hours. Intermediate. <laughs> I, I had to do it for, um, for, uh, just reading negative news. Just, I was reading, yeah. my wife was like, you need to get away from the news. And I'm like, I'm just keep clicking refresh, hoping that someone's going to be like, we found a vaccine or the whole problem. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. But you're getting 99.9% of like the most negative people and negative stories over and over again. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And then you go outside and take a deep breath of the fresh air outside. You're like, oh, the sky isn't falling. This is a planet that I live on. Things are different right now. And they always will be different and good and bad and good. And right. And everything's I mean, fine. I, Take a deep breath. That's what, like, that's what I keep oh. saying to myself is I'm like, is I'm, is people are like, this is weird. And I'm like, well, so was our former way of life. I mean, it was going a lot more smoothly, but that was also incredibly weird. Yeah. Like when everything started kind of breaking down and like people started, you know, protests were happening and all that other stuff. I literally started thinking like, how did we go this long without more of society just crumbling like how are we all in just this system of just like well i have a credit card so then my money goes here and then if this guy buys this then everything just keeps moving and nobody says anything and just even the fact that everything was working in harmony for as long as it was is insane to me when i think about it i i i I feel the same way uh as as far as the insanity of things working and i i came to that conclusion one day in in a or a similar conclusion one day but also i gave it came from a place of gratitude because obviously you know we are both both you and I are again we're around a lot of people there's a lot of complaining a lot of whiny about how awful America is how awful people are how awful you know there's a lot of when I was a kid it was self-hating Jews that everyone would be like don't be a self-hating Jew but now, <laughs> nowadays I just look out I just see a lot of people that are self-hating humans and I'm just like you know they're constantly they, they're taking the gospel of Bill Hicks with the where barbers with shoes and I'm like yes and no but calm down and there's something to be just have gratitude about. And I used to say this when a couple, a handful of friends, I'm thinking in my head, they're very negative and everything's awful and everyone, everyone's horrible people. I'd say, you know what? We should be happy right now that we have running water. When you dial 911, if your house is on fire, they will most likely come put it out. If yep. you, you know what I mean? Like you need to wash your clothes. You have water for your, to wash your clothes. If you want to get some food, you can go get food. Those general things. It's amazing with how yeah. so many people are that we have those things generally running. Obviously, we've seen some hiccups since the pandemic, but in general, they generally run. And as much as people want to talk shit on all these, all these, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, knuckle draggers and whatever else out there, and people not doing this, and uh, oh, society is so dumb and blah blah blah. There's a lot of that like heartbeat of America people out there that are still making sure that we have the power to run our computers right now that are still making sure yes. that we have groceries. I just bought cilantro. There's someone in a field somewhere right now, even with a pandemic going on, <laughs> they grabbed cilantro for me. Now, of course, we know people, and I, I know many people that would be like, they shouldn't be out in the field getting cilantro. All right, that's a whole other discussion. I'm just saying I'm thankful someone's out there and they got a cilantro. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. hundred percent. Like, I mean, gra- gra- gratitude is so important right now. And I realize that, like, you know, like social media – when it's used correctly is great, but so many times it's not, I I'm not using it as a tool. I'm using it as an excuse or an escape to not do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Like, have you ever had yeah, that moment when like you're out to dinner with friends and I mean, this is from many years ago when we used <laughs> to go out to dinner with friends, God, I like, that literally, you excuse yourself to the bathroom just so you can look at your phone for like a couple of minutes. And like, I would have these, I don't know if that ever happened to you, but I would have moments like that where it's like, man, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. And I'm just going to like open Twitter for a minute or so. And it's just like, what is wrong with me? Like, yeah, I it's don't need attention, man. It's, it's not your fault. Yeah, Everybody's going through it. And it crept into our lives in a way. I, and I think if you're in entertainment, you have these excuses of like, well, I have to, this is how I communicate with it. And the same thing with real estate. It's like, well, this is how I communicate with, with, with my clients, potential clients. This is where people message me and say, Hey dude, like, I'm thinking about selling my house. Can you help me figure this out? Like, so I make the excuse in my head that I have to. And I tell my wife the same thing. This is work. But in reality, it's also 
an addiction. So it's work and it's an addiction. It's, it's, I, I would say we have to take responsibility, but at the same time, it's not totally our fault. Am I just am I exonerating? Both no, of it's, 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 totally it's definitely fault. not like you, you, they're, they're good at their color patterns and all those other things that oh, make yeah. us go like more, 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 every single, li- you know, every single click is just another little tick in my heart that's going, Ooh, 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 Ooh. It's true. And the more you get, the more you want to get sucked in. And that's when, that's when I really, I think, if I, if I learned anything from having this birthday um, through quarantine was that when I spent the whole day away from it after needing to be on it for a couple of days to respond to all this, I was like, I don't need seven days a week of social media. There's no reason why yes. I need, yeah. why I can't take one day a week and just completely take it away. So that way the other, on that day, I stopped thinking about it and I opened my mind up to ideas and other things that maybe I'm not allowing to get in there because I'm just not allowing myself to be bored. I think that's so great. Um, okay, so I guess my my last two questions for you, and, and I, I, would you recommend that to listeners too? Like, if they're listening, like, hey, we're talking about fasting, take a social media fast. Like, for oh my god, uh, yeah, right, one hundred percent. Like, you don't if you don't look at the news for one day, you are going to be absolutely fine. I oh, promise. It's, like, it's, you are. I agree. You will be fine. Like take, I'm not saying, I'm not saying get all the news out of your life because it is important to stay informed, but one day a week of you not being on your phone. And the thing is I called people that day. Like it was my birthday. My family all called to check in with me and we, I had long conversations with them. You know, I was doing all this stuff that I was like, I was still, I was using my phone the way we're supposed to use a phone. <laughs> which yeah. feels so foreign right now to just not be using it to go online and check things. I was like, I don't need it. I don't need it. So yes, I highly encourage anyone to go do that. That's that's so so good. And also just to add to that, if you're if you're if you're reading way too much depressing news, be aware that it doesn't matter if you're conservative, liberal, centrist, whatever you are, like so, some news is trying to prey on you by giving you scary things to keep you clicking. And yep. it's a shame. It's a real shame. Um, and, uh, uh, it doesn't matter what partisan, like you subscribe to they're it's trying to scare you. So you have to break away from it for a little bit and you can, uh, click on, I, I sub- or subscribe to what I call, I saved the bookmarked, uh, Reddit forward slash, I think it's coronavirus good news or something like that. And oh, that's good. You, you, ha- you still have to fan through the story. Sometimes people publish stuff. They like, that's not necessarily good or that's a hype article or whatever, but there's enough stuff in there to get you going like, Hey, like if I'm going to read something, I might as well read about how far along they're coming with vaccines or, or this new treatment that might work. Even if it might not work, it's still like, might as well read that rather than uh, the sky is falling articles nonstop because the sky is not falling. Right. You know, it's crazy. It's scary times for a lot of people. A lot of people have, sky has personally fallen for them but objectively the sky is not falling human race is resilient i guess i should segue into something more important instead of me giving a fucking lecture here a hey no it's lecture. cool man people people yeah i'm, I'm saying like hey, look if you want to read coronavirus news great but then follow it up by watching a video of bizarre animal friends so you remember that the world can also be a magical place it, it really it really yeah. is cool. and they're making other medical progresses right now for other people and other things because of the coronavirus they're learning about new drug treatments and and flu flu is down the actual flu is down because of yeah. the, all the precautions for coronavirus um so there's there's some like fun stuff that you can like look at and still be aware and not be scared to know that like people are still suffering and there's some really bad stuff going on but it's not just all bad it's a yin and a yang. Damn straight. So but what's your next question? My next question that that I was more excited about that I because I tangented way too much was Alex. Two things. Uh, what are you most pessimistic about, and what are you most optimistic about for the future? And start with the <sighs> pessimistic because I always like to leave with a nice. Things are good. Um, I'm. I'm pessimistic about uh, really about how comedy is going to come back safely. I know this is a very insular answer because okay. of from my own life, but um, I really like without going on stage, like I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do as a performer. And the fact that like, I'm hearing comedians going back on the road and then like, you know, DL Hughley like passes out at Zany's in Nashville oh, yeah. and then he comes up with COVID. Brian Callen goes to San Antonio and he comes back with COVID. Like all these things. It's just like, it's, it's scary to think that like right now, Having normally, I would know exactly what to do with this television appearance. I would know how to leverage it into more work, into traveling, into getting road gigs, and all. Yeah, this of course, stuff. that's exactly and what like, you aim for. Like, that's, a, that's right, and it's what you want. I need more television appearances so I can do more tickets, yeah. and then my dreams come true. That 
100%. And I was fully ready. I went into this year for the first time ever, not just with a, with a real plan of attack of like, I know I have AGT, so I'm going to record this album that's going to come out right before that appearance. And then I'm going to do a special in the fall. Yeah. And then I'm going to lead all, all of these things are going to lead to to next year. I'm going to be selling out every show I do on the road. Everything's going to like, I was ready with a plan. And then having it all kind of fall apart made me have to re-examine everything. And now I'm at a point where it's just like, man, when can I go back to like being just doing a regular, when can we have concerts again? My, my fiance just told me she read an article from someone in the industry at like live nation for something. He said, he, we might not have actual concerts again until 2022. And I was like, as someone who loves live entertainment, yeah, I know it's my do. favorite outlet. I know I, that is really, really difficult for me to cope with of just not having not being you know seeing friends but like at a from a distance and not hugging them oh god i know awful it's awful and i hate it um and yeah. i'm trying to i'm trying to make do with what's better so now that's so i'm pessimistic about how we're going how things are really going to get back on track about what's going to happen you know obviously easy things with the economy when people can't pay their rent when all that stuff starts really coming to fruition when the small businesses really decide that they can't close because i don't think we've seen the worst of any of this yet as far as the economy goes so yeah. i'm 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 worried about that stuff however i'm very optimistic that this will hopefully get people back to the people that want to be out there and want to be having a social life and i hope that when it is time and it's safe that people are going to really appreciate their friends and their family again in a way that maybe that we haven't been in a long time like i was saying like when i go to the bathroom because i just want to look at my phone for a second like I don't want that to happen ever again. Like I don't, I want to be very much in the moment with my friends, appreciating that maybe that all of this could be gone in a second. And we never thought, we never really thought about that. It was always a possibility yeah. somewhere in the background of our mind. And now that it has been, how can we change our lives and change our social circumstances to do, to play together safely in a way that's still going to encourage us to keep pushing on. And no matter how bad the shit gets that we are still, we practice self care. We practice love. We practice giving something happened to me in this pandemic that I was not expecting because I couldn't think about my own career so much and because it wasn't like, well, what emails do I have to send? What avails do I have to do? What club am I going to be at the time? When I stopped thinking about all that, I started thinking about other people's much more than I ever have. And I started, that's when I started going to protest. That's when I started doing like fundraising stuff. I started giving away money for like the first time ever to different causes every single week. And I, for the first time in my life, I stopped thinking about me, me, me. How can I help myself while, you know, while making friends along the way, I'm not completely selfish, but this has been the first time where I'm like, stop, slow down, look around who needs my help right now? And that has been a beautiful life lesson that I've taken away from this. And I hope it continues throughout. Well, thanks for sharing that with us, man. That's beautiful. You're a beautiful man. Really appreciate all you your- too, Dude, thank you so much for allowing me to spend some time with you right now virtually. And, and it feels great. I feel like I'm- Yeah, nice- definitely, man. I just, just, even just having these conversations, like I said, like, I mean, this- motivates me this lifts me up this allows me to go okay cool now let's go out there and now let's do some writing now let's go to the you know now i'm ready to be outside again and yeah yeah, i mean it's just so good to hear your face and know that your family's doing well and all that stuff i mean that's that's the best thing it really is i love you dude let me give you an air hug since we can't do real hugs i know here oh puggy love puggy love Puggy love, puggy love, puggy love. All right, dude. Um, where you, should people? You're great, man. You are. Where do you, where do you want people to, to grab your grab your album? Um, super. Um, HooperComedy.com is my website. You can find my first album on there. You can find my blog posts and videos and stuff like that. And then at Hooper Hair Puff on all social media. Oh, awesome, so dude. Find me there. Happy birthday. Have a great rest of the day, dude. Mwah. Thank you so much. You too. Love you, man. Love Mwah. you too, dude. Bye. Bye guys! Thanks for listening. I'm so stoked that you guys uh, got to hear that. And do 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 what Alex was talking about. Do a uh, social media fast. It'll be uh, it'll be good for you, and then it'll be good for the whole world.